On this week's episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, we find out that the app is closed. Uh, that's an interesting take on some warm weather being cookout time. Also, we're going to talk about being in the military. Uh, yes, and completely unrelated to the military. I'm in a mad rush to get shit done. Um, also, I saw the arrival this week. Sweet. But, but, but were you there? <laughs> we'll find out. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 209 for Thursday, the 4th of April, 2019. Yeah, that's it. I had to guess because my window, my screen cut it off. Uh, this is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos. That's Kent. We both have goatees. That's just how it's going to be. What's up? <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Your goatee has returned. You can have facial hair now. Um, amazing. Um, I'm not saying my goatee is amazing. I'm saying the ability not to shave every day is clearly superior to the alternative. And I concur, sir. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get into a little bit of of that um, as we go on. But man, uh, the weather's getting nice. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, um, yeah, I I can uh, I can cook out now, like yeah. pretty much whenever I want, except for on the oh I don't know eighty percent of the time that the wind is fucking stupid here. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's that's my well. So it's warm here too. It's finally up in the forties and the fifties, so it's really nice and warm. It's uh, t-shirt and jeans weather which is like my preferred weather. However, we've been, we frequently get windstorms here in the Valley and it's been no different to the last, this week really. And a, a constant 30 gusting to 60 is never fun. And I'm not grilling in that. I'll yeah. grill in the garage with the door open. Cause that's, that's what you do when it's cold. Except my yeah, garage yeah. heater is broken too. So I don't, I'm just, Ooh, I'm just yeah. not going to grill anytime soon. Yeah. See, and that, and that's, yeah. Uh, uh, valley problems, I guess. Cause I, yeah, I'm, I'm at the foot of like kind of in the foothills of the mountains where I'm at. And it's kind of the same problem. The wind just kind of just rolls right on down the mountains and mm. just ruins everyone's day. Ours comes up from the, from the water, from the, uh, mm. whichever finger. Yeah. It's the, the, what is it? The Aleutian Bay or so? No, that's not where you are. <laughs> 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 <No>. <laughs> <laughs> no, a- a- I mean the the Indian Ocean. No, 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 no. no a- Anchorage the- Anchorage sits on a on a bay, and then a shoot from a bay is an arm, and then the arm that shoots up for the the main body of water that shoots from there to like the the smaller parts is a finger. I don't know what why, why they skip the hand, but that's how it works. And I live just off of the knick arm going into the uh, uh shoot. Some other finger, I don't know. <laughs> so, just fingers at the end of an arm, no hand. Right, right. It, no it, hand it, required. No, no, because I mean, once you, um, what's a hand give you? Like some some surface area and a, a maybe a wrist, but I mean that can be incorporated too, right? I mean, it could be, but is it? I don't think it is. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you can't you can't tattoo a hand that's not there, so I guess that's a thing. That, that that's yeah that's the that's the biggest problem with not having a hand it's less less tat service area I guess yeah I mean I, and, and that's important to some people hey um uh we are what ten days away from Game of Thrones returning for season eight oh yes nine ten days something like that yes and I'm only eight episodes behind on uh, releasing let's talk about Thrones so I'm in a mad rush and I'm pushing one out every single day until uh, until we get there because I've got I think I have two days I can miss and yeah. cranking them out other than that so man it's been uh, and that's just my personal editing I've been doing a lot of other stuff too and it's been kind of crazy like I'm learning so much about more about audition. Like necessity drives innovation, right? So that's what I'm doing. That's that's how my life is going right now. Yeah, and uh, for our audience that enjoys Game of Thrones and has not listened to Let's Talk About Thrones with Amos, of course, mm-hmm. uh, wonderful Richard Gunther and the inimitable Jenny Josephson, uh, you guys are missing out and you need to go find that. It's Let's Talk About Thrones. It's, it's pretty great. And yeah. I have like a thousand of them in my feed right now because... <laughs> 
they were all dumped in my lap this week. <laughs> so far, all the ones that you have in your in your feed were done on Sunday night, and a sparse amount. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's where that's. Um, here's the other thing, though, is we are so tonight we'll go out episode. Uh, was it twenty six, which is the first episode of season six, first and second episode of season six of the show. So if you haven't been listening until now, it's not a bad time to jump on and kind of really ramp up to the end because we're going to be covering the last two seasons. Um, we've only got two recording dates left. We timed that perfectly. And then we will be pushing out one episode of Let's Talk About Thrones after each episode of season eight, preferably the next day. So you'll have it right away and be able to hear all of our stupid thoughts. And uh Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, Game of Thrones is coming. W. Scott S. One wants to know uh, Game of Thrones comes back April 14th for the final season. And if you haven't watched it, he says he hasn't watched it and hasn't read it. That's exactly the premise of the show. Jenny and I have both read varying amounts of the books. Richard had never seen or read or spoiled anything. So he's coming at it from a completely brand new perspective. Jump in there, grab that. Let's talk about Thrones and um yeah it's 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 fun it's not entirely accurate as kent has has told us and in fact he he showed up on the show one day and he wanted to tell it gives a a three-hour expose on the first scene and (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah it's it's a lot of fun let's talk about thrones at at gmail.com to tell us uh give us all your feedback so anyway that's that's thrones yeah yep pretty pretty great um tell me tell me about these razors that uh uh, okay. That, All right. that are in your life right now. So how do you shave? Uh, so I don't have to shave super often. Well, first of all, because I'm not in the military anymore, so I don't have to be clean shaven. I do uh, sport a uh, goatee. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, keep, I try to keep it short, mm-hmm. uh, you know, pretty close. So once every couple of weeks, I will trim that up, trim up the um, the goatee, the mustache and the, you know, the chin hair mm-hmm. uh, with an electric razor with a guard on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, once a week I will, um, shave with like a, you know, your standard, uh, Gillette razor. Five blade I, razor so I use, uh, Harry's razors. Oh, okay. So I use a, um, I use a shaving soap. Mm-hmm. So I go old school with the, with the brush and the, the bowl, mm. um, lather up real nice and, uh, shave. that's my, uh, it's part of my Sunday night routine is to shave. Not knowing that, I recently just started shaving on Sundays because I only need to shave once a week to maintain what I consider a adequate <laughs> level of clean facedness. Right. <laughs> um, and I actually switched over to Harry's right before I right before I start going to work full time, just because it was cheaper. Uh, and they're, they're they're about the same quality as the Gillette that I was using before, but they're roughly mm-hmm. a third the price. So yeah, I'm I'm down with that. Okay, cool. Um, but. I can still only use the Harry's blades. Like I'd have to use. Well, with, with Gillette, I could get away with one a week, maybe. Mm, um, and that's shaving five days a week. That's five days a week, yeah. Uh, and with the with the Harry's, I could go a week and a half, maybe. Like they're they're a little bit better, a little more durable. But I've got a really thick beard. I got more hair on my chin than I have in my head. So <laughs> I went ahead and took the plunge and got the old the the safety razor. The double-edged safety razor. I went and got uh, the little the, the little brush and the bowl and the soap and all that stuff. And I've been doing that. And this is the first week that I, I did that. And, man, I got to tell you, the most comfortable shave I've ever had, the closest shave, uh, uh, single single stroke, you know, the uh, only, only went over it once. I didn't go back over it or anything else. Closest shave I've ever had. And other than right down here where I got kind of a dual direction grain thing going on my chin near my, near, or on my neck near my Adam's apple, mm-hmm. not a single cut on my face. Nice. It was glorious. I might take that plunge, dude, because that's like really, that's all that's left, right? To, to like go full out, you know, man, like I shave like a man. Well, you could go with straight edge, which is not the safety razor. It's just the flat straight edge that's, you know, <laughs> Right. Um, that's the one that you like, you know, you sharpen with a, with a leather belt. Yeah. With the- <laughs> yeah. I'm not going there. Uh, I, I saw the, <laughs> I watched the color purple. I know I'm never going to use that kind of blade. I'm done. 
I'll stick with the safety razor. It's comfortable. And here's the kicker, man. You get a, a pack of 100 blades for like seven bucks of like good quality blades. Mm-hmm. I can I can use a new blade every single time I shave and still be way ahead of the ball on uh, on on using the, the disposables. The razor, the 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 Gillettes yep. and shit, mm-hmm. even the Harrys. So yeah, that's that was that was my big uh, geeking out thing. I spent like two weeks doing research. Um, I didn't buy anything really fancy. I'm hoping maybe for my birthday I'll get something in the old Amazon. Um, but uh, yeah, I uh, went and just picked up whatever they had at the grocery store, which is like Vanderhausen or some junk like that, and it works fine. So I can't wait to maybe up that game a little bit and start using some better better soaps, maybe some pre shave oil because I do have a nice thick beard. Mm. And uh, uh, get some uh, some 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 better gear and just see how that works. Because if I like the generic cheap stuff pretty good, I can't wait to try some of the midline stuff. Oh hell yeah, man! That is awesome. That is like the manly. This is the manliest conversation I've had in a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I tell you I also used it on my balls? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> that's what Manscaped is for, and I recommend their products because I have a few and they're great. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, that's. That's well, yeah, we're um, we're gonna have to throw some links in the old show notes. <laughs> <laughs> and they won't even be affiliate links because I don't think they do that thing. Um, no, Manscaped, uh, Manscaped.com, you go there and they got like the mower 2.0 because the 1.0 was different. Um, uh, and they got a, 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 ones designed for shaving your nuts and trimming your bush downstairs and all that stuff. Man, that's all they do. They don't do any nothing above the neck, it's all like at the waistline, uh, grooming. And uh, everything that I've used worked out pretty good. Yeah. So W. Scottis one in the chat says that that his aunt got him some beard oil for Christmas. Uh, but what, what, as I was reading it, the the timing was when you were talking about the manscape stuff. Mm, mm-hmm. And I thought he was about to tell us that his aunt bought him some manscaping uh, stuff. Yeah. And I, it's like, mm, OK, it was beard oil. <laughs> That's Yeah. I mean, it really depends on uh, on how you're growing and where you're growing it. But. <laughs> yeah. man so my so my geekiest thing this week i watched the movie arrival i know i know i'm late to the game mm-hmm. it's been out for a while but it was on amazon prime mm-hmm. have you seen the movie i have not but now that you tell me it's on amazon prime i might watch it the, at least i think it was prime it was either prime netflix or hbo <laughs> whatever it's on it was- it's on a service i already paid for so yeah i might watch it now exactly um man I was surprised that this movie, it, it was not what I thought it was. It was better than I thought it was. This movie's very cerebral in the way that I like it. It's how I like my sci-fi. Mm. Uh, so the basic premise is that aliens show up. And, uh, of course, there's a you know military and government response. Oh, is this the one with the ink? Yes. Oh, yeah, so, I, saw, I saw it. I watched it. I watched it uh, a long time it. ago. Yeah. Okay. So basically they have to learn how to communicate with these yes. aliens. To, to find out, you know, why are you here? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, are you are you hostile or you know what's what's going on here? And uh, I'm not going to spoil the movie because it goes places. It, uh, it, it, and it has a nice little hooky jab at the end that uh, no one else in my family saw coming until it happened. And one of them actually had to have that explained to them. But I saw it from the very beginning, understood what it was, put it in a little, flagged it and pin, pinned it, put a little in a little pocket in my mind, and waited to see if if that was going to come back up. And it sure did. And Oh my goodness, that is a great payoff, even when you know what's going on. Yep, yep, so good. I yeah. I kind of want to watch it again, knowing what I know, <laughs> and uh, man, yeah. just good, good stuff. Like really, really good. Yeah, I I enjoyed it mostly because it was a movie that um, it didn't take a lot of thinking to understand the basics of what was going on and you could enjoy it. Although there's like another level to everything. And if you had some, some geek insight really on how languages are constructed and how glyphs and symbols, and you, you kind of saw, you know, kept up with the movie and on that second level, it, it was a whole different movie and it's just, it was good. It was well acted. And the, I thought the special effects were spot on. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the, the language aspect really spoke to me because I I love language construction and grammar and linguistics. And yeah, stuff. yeah, I love I love that sort of stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it was a home run for me. That was that's thumbs way up on that. Movie. Speaking of uh, of that, have you ever watched the YouTube videos with the ling- linguistic uh, ling- 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 linguisticians? 
the do uh, is this the guy that that uh reviews movie like uh fake, actors yeah. and their fake languages out. and and all that yeah yes. yeah there, i mean he that's I'm, I'm sure we're talking about the same one but yeah there's several of them out there man those are i can sit there and watch that junk all day too me too and that guy if we're talking about the same guy like that guy like i've got a little bit of a man crush on that guy i could listen to him talk about language and accents and all of that like all day like literally all day yeah every day yeah and and, and he knows his <laughs> shit and that's the biggest part of it is he knows what the hell he's talking about yeah um so yeah that's that's always good stuff hey um real quick dude uh it's time for a, a movie draft update isn't it um yeah, I mean, we don't have to play it. I mean, there's no good information on it. I mean, we we do have to play it, though. Well, I do want to hear Big Voice Jay talk. Right, Speaking exactly. Of, of enjoying hearing people talk. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and play it. See? Now, now you cut on. Welcome to your Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv, for the week of April 1st, 2019. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. Feeling pretty proud of myself. The puzzle I bought said three to five years, but I finished it in ten months. Fuck it, puzzle. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Zertual Misery, The Mod Squad, and Drunk Kids Gaming are all tied for last place. Still waiting for their first film. Team Game Night is in third place thanks to Dumbo bringing them $53.6 million. Team Movie Party is in second place with $134.2 million. And in first place with $362.2 million, it's Team Have a Drink. Watch your stream Team Movie Draft Minute all told as a record as of April 3rd, 2019. So I want to I want to say congratulations to Game Night for having fifty three million dollars um, because they're about ninety five percent of the way through their their uh, <laughs> everything that they're gonna earn. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, W. Scott is one. Uh, I know you're watching right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Those are the rules, though. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's still we're still a ways off until we have our first movie. Uh, which is going to be a dog's journey. <laughs> I saw a preview for it today on YouTube, so I'm getting psyched because I saw a preview for a movie I'd forgotten existed, <laughs> let alone was in our draft pool. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's going to make a little bit of a little bit of scratch. Yeah, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to be a hundred million dollar movie, but it's it, it, it'll do okay, I think. Yeah. Um. Uh, what about Dumbo though? Because I, I I heard a lot of people, the people that went to see it enjoyed it, is what I got from it. Hmm. Not a lot of people went to see it that they were on my Twitter feed because that's where I judge life uh, for, for all aspects now. But <laughs> the people that did go enjoyed it. My my uh, Amber took uh, Autumn and they both liked it. So I think it's it's probably what you go into the movie with. Like if you're expecting uh, just a you know a popcorn movie and you get a popcorn movie, then you're gonna be happy with it. But if you expect to recapture your childhood and you forgot that Tim Burton made the movie and it's dark and not recapturing your childhood, then you're probably gonna be disappointed. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen it, so I can't really speak to it, but, um, <laughs> but, but you yeah. just did. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm conjecturing. I don't have an actual opinion on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was just reminded that I forgot to start the discord stream today. So that's going to be a thing. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not worry about it this time, and we'll, we'll, we'll recapture that magic next time. Um, a, I, I'm really looking forward to the next time we have a special event on the Ritual Misery Patreon. Um, are you talking about uh, Patreon.com/slash Ritual Misery? Yes, yes, I am. What what sort of special event would that be? Well, you haven't told me yet, but you said it's going to be amazing and it's going to come out this weekend. Oh, man. I can't wait either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Um, yeah. Yeah. So head over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Uh, go ahead and, and show us that you give a fuck by giving us a buck and uh, find out what, what this surprise awesome thing for the patrons is going to be <laughs> the Ken Ken hasn't figured out yet. Uh, <laughs> pa Patreon uh, just came up with teams. Um, they announced it a couple weeks ago with Tom Merritt and the DTNS team was one of the first teams to get the feature still in beta. I got to say, I really, really like it except you can't like when I, when I signed on as one of the team members for DTNS, 
it canceled my pledge. Because you because you can't pledge to your own your own your own thing. Oh, oh no! <laughs> so so five oh, no. five years of uh, of supporting DTNS with a with a single random uh, credit card hiccup in the middle uh, came to an end this week when I was invited to DTNS team on Patreon. <laughs> oh no, man, man! Patreon's being weird because so we have concerns. I'm still a patron of We Have Concerns. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff Canada and Anthony Carboni's old show that was absolutely freaking amazing uh but you know they suspended their their campaign they mm-hmm. wanted to ha- still have a way to communicate with patrons but without charging anyone right mm-hmm. well everyone got charged this month and they came out with an apology like like oh my god like we are so sorry we don't know what happened and then they had they actually had a we have concerns reunion on twitch uh to basically apologize to everyone uh, and i haven't watched it yet but um I'm actually kind of looking for it. It's worth my dollar yeah. to have, have concerns uh, reunited. So there, that's that's a thing. I saw some Twitter traffic about that, and there 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 there's some consideration to bringing the show back in some form. Um, I don't I don't I'm not going to say if that I think that's uh, uh, going to happen, but at least the consideration was there, and yeah. that I saw a lot of response to that. So that might that might be uh, that might be a cool thing to to maybe this will be give them a kick in the shorts to. You know, we still out there. We still love you. Bring it back. Yeah. Oh, good stuff, man. Whatever they decide to do, I'm, I, I'm man, looking forward to it. All right. Um, Is it time for this? Yeah. Can I please have your attention? In the last thirty minutes, kids done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kids games. Play with him. This week we've got the Army Navy game. Oh, is that still a thing? Yeah, it's a it's an annual event, right? Mm. Where um, you know the the army and the navy in their respective cat- uh, uh, academies uh, square off in the NCAA. Uh, that's not what this is, though. <laughs> <laughs> this is a game that I made about forty five minutes before we went live, uh, where I'm going to state a fact. That is either about the Army, mm-hmm. the United States Army, or the United States Navy. You're going to tell me which one I'm referring to. Oh, fun. Okay. Pretty simple, straightforward. Yeah. All right, Amos, your first fact. 31 presidents have served in the military. 16 of them served in this branch. The Army. Of course, of course. The first submarine was used by this service during the Revolutionary War. Army. <laughs> I like your deduction there. because You're like, okay, obviously the Navy has submarines. Why would you ask me such an obvious question? But, it's, uh, be, well, I, I didn't... I, I That thought occurred, but then I let it flush out because the thought process was... Was I mean, I never hear stories about the Navy in the Revolutionary War, the Civil War. I always hear stories about these Army people doing really weird shit. So I'm going to go with with Army. Yeah, Yeah, well, I mean, the Navy was formed, like, basically at the same time as the Navy. We're talking, like, 1795 or 1775 or something like that, Mm -hmm. 1774, 1775. Uh, So the Navy was definitely involved in, in both of those conflicts. Um, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, I mean, you don't hear a lot about their exploits because there's mostly, uh, mostly ground battle stuff going on. Um, all right. So speaking of the army and the Navy, I have another fact here mm. about one of those. This services Academy mascot is a goat. Navy. <sighs> so did you know it was the Navy or did you deduce that somehow? Uh, I allowed my own prejudices to answer for me. <laughs> oh, where's Poodle Puncher when you when you need him? Um, old uh, Navy vet. Uh, uh, get him in here maybe in the post show too. Or, or too. Squid. Or Squid. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, get both of them in the post show. Let's, uh, we'll see what they have to say about that. All right. Your <laughs> next fact. Ray-Ban sunglasses were created at the request of this branch. Navy. You say it was the Navy. 
It was, in fact, the army. Hmm. Uh, I don't remember which general it was, but he wanted something that would would um, protect his soldiers from UV rays. And uh, a company was formed specifically to make Ray-Ban sunglasses to fulfill the Army's request. Hmm. So, yeah. All right, your next fact. This branch's camouflage has tiny service insignias printed into the pattern. Navy. It is. Yeah, you can... Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Like, it's the Globe and Anchor, right? Globe. Do what? It's it's the Globe and Anchor, the little... The, yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you can... Well, sort of. Yeah, because, I mean, Globe, Globe and Anchor is Marine Corps, but it's a it's a very similar looking... Um, it, anyway, look, do a Google image search, uh, everybody, and, and check out that... Like it, it, they're really tiny, but you have to kind of like you know zoom in, and you can see the the insignia uh, hidden in the pattern. It's actually pretty neat. I didn't know anything about that until today, so pretty neat. All right, uh, your next fact: "Mind your P's and Q's" was a phrase originated by bookkeepers in this service. Mind Army. your P's and Q's. Army. You say it was the army. <laughs> you would be wrong. Um, so P's and Q's stands for pints and quarts. And it was referring to alcoholic beverages. Uh, so the um, uh, this was like a long ass time ago. The the Navy used to run a. Um, it was kind of like, oh, I'll think like an officer's club, right? Mm -hmm. And they had bookkeepers that were actually like, you know, keeping the books and everything for, uh, you know, for bar tabs and things like that. And the sailors were told to mind their P's and Q's, meaning that like settle up your debt, like settle up your bar tab at the end of the night. Hmm. So if you, if oh man, I got to mind my P's and Q's tonight, means that you kind of have to like, you know, keep, Keep a clear head. Don't get too drunk so that you don't forget to pay your tab. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I figure once I'm ordering quarts of anything, I'm going to forget my tab. <laughs> right. <It's... laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not inaccurate. Four pints to a quart, something like that, right? Uh, sure. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. Um, imperial system for the win. Woo. No. <laughs> All right. Um, your next one. This one should be pretty easy. Top Gun is a prestigious school for aviators mm -hmm. of this branch. Uh, the Navy. Of course, of course, of course. Um, yeah, so when I was a kid, I thought that, that Top Gun was um, the whole was Navy. Air Force, oh. even though even though it's said multiple times in the movie that they're Navy. Um, I was a dumb kid and i just saw airplanes and i was like, i like how you refer to the dumb kid thing in past tense next question <laughs> right. well, i mean at least now i know that that you know top gun is navy i, le I at least knew that <laughs> tom cruise isn't uh he he's not cool enough for air force yeah so speaking of which you know about this uh new movie coming out soon top gun maverick mm -hmm. yeah i'm looking forward to that they um they were just filming recently in the Canyon where they filmed some uh, some like Star Wars Tatooine footage hmm. uh, decades ago. So I don't know. I just saw that in the news a couple days ago. So pretty cool. I well, uh, the, my favorite things about that movie were not Tom Cruise related. Uh, Kelly McGillis. <laughs> we'll say yes to that and move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Your next one. A unit in this branch used a swastika as part of their insignia the army. until it was co-opted by the Nazis. Army. You say it was the army. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a it was an infantry unit, and um, I, I guess that I guess that because pretty much any GIF you can find anywhere, uh, any uh, line art has been used as some sort of army badge somewhere. 
Right. Yeah. So this in particular was used uh, by a unit who had a large number of Native Americans in their unit. And a lot of Native Americans saw the swastika as a good luck symbol. And um, not for the Jews. Yeah. And but that that didn't become a thing until about World War Two when the Nazis took over that symbol and yeah. uh, made it into a symbol of hate. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Next question. Anyway, uh, R.I.P. Swastikas. <laughs> All right. The next one. The 21 gun salute originated with this service. Navy. Yes. Didn't it originally refer to the size of the gun, not the number of guns? Um, I don't remember, but the <laughs> there will be a link in the show notes where people can do their own research. <laughs> I think it, I think it was I think it was a twenty one gun was the size of the gun, but I could easily very easily be wrong. And now I mean, I'm even you, second guessing myself. If you measure from your anus, uh, no, that's not the proper way to measure. <laughs> In your final question, George Washington chose the colors for this service's dress uniform. Army. You say it was the army, and you would be correct. <clears throat> All right, you got eight out of ten. Not bad. You get a B minus. <laughs> <laughs> it's curved all this shit. <laughs> um, <clears throat> wow, what a what a dick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you passed. All right, uh, um, so you sent you 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 put in a an article in the old uh, show notes here. Talking about the 50 surprising Air Force facts, and that didn't work. Um, there it is. About the Air Force basic training. And I went down through and I looked at most of them. How many, uh, percentage-wise, how many of these do you think actually applied to us while we were going through basic training? Uh, so there's there's 50 things there, and I read this hours ago. I felt like uh, probably 70%. 60 to 70 percent okay that's a little more uh, than i thought but yeah there was a there was a good deal of crossover i mean some of the things didn't apply directly because like for example they were talking about like eight and a half weeks of training i mean right we did six and a half weeks yeah you know? um, we didn't do warrior week at all uh we didn't yeah fire they, call it, they call it beast week now did we fire weapons we did we had okay. one afternoon of of firing weapons of pew, pew? Uh, 16 uh, would have been way better if it was an afternoon of firing weapons on F-16. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable, but whatever. Um, yeah. So I, I looked at this, uh, I didn't look for this in particular. I've never actually heard of this website before. It's called basic to blues.com. And it's basically a, it's an air force vet that's giving helpful tips to people that are about to, or thinking about, joining the air force he talks a lot about basic training what deployments are like mm -hmm. uh, what life is like on an air force base things like that and uh this top 10 list showed up in my search uh, because i was i was looking for uh some information about a particular aspect of basic training that uh, i think was i think it's pretty universal to anybody that goes to basic uh not being able to poop for <laughs> Days and possibly even weeks. How how many days in was your first poop? Uh, I was trying to remember this last night because I was actually I was talking to my son Lucas about uh, you know basic training stories and things, and I don't remember. I want to say it was right around a week before I was able to go. I think mine was nine days. Nine days. Yeah. 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 It's just yeah. a little more than a week. Yeah. And so this is a phenomenon that happens to like almost everyone that goes to basic training. Yep. Uh, there's, there's the obvious, uh, like psychological, uh, uh, like state of shock, basically that the, your lifestyle, it doesn't matter what your life was like before you go, get to basic training. Your lifestyle is drastically different once you get to basic uh, mm -hmm. You have privacy. You you are constantly being scrutinized and yelled at, and you're surrounded by people that you don't know. You're not around anything that's familiar to you. Uh, you have no freedom. You can't do anything that you want. Uh, so that it's a very um, uh, abrupt psychological impact. 
but there's also the physical aspects as well. Um, you no longer get to consume uh, sugar, caffeine, uh, of course, alcohol and tobacco are completely out of the question. Yeah, uh, but it, it's not just stress and dietary change, though. It Most people are going through more activity than they are normally used right. to. You're standing more, you're walking more, which you should help with the poop cycle, but... Uh. <laughs> right. Uh, it's just all of these changes, like your your body, like mentally and physically, just goes into kind of a state of shock. And um, yeah, like you you are unable to poop. <laughs> yeah, kill the non-essential functions, and apparently pooping, not essential. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. And the thing is, like you don't know that this is going to happen or not happen in this case until like about i don't know day five something like that well, day six around, you start asking around like like hey like because you you tend to like latch on to somebody like maybe you're you know the guy in the bunk next to you or something you kind of start to you know try to get to know and you need somebody to trust right so you're like hey dude um i know this is gonna sound weird but uh i uh i haven't been able to poop since I got here and then you almost across the board the other person will look at you and be like oh my god thank god I'm not the only one <laughs> now, now you you said it in a particular way now you said I was I have not been able to poop like had you tried I think I did like on I don't know day four day five something like that where I was like when it, when it became obvious to me that I what the hell? I haven't pooped. Like I didn't have to poop. Yeah. Which was the weird thing. I'm like, I'm, I've been a pretty regular shitter my life, pretty much my <laughs> whole life. Like I'm, I'm pretty regular once a day, like every once in a great while I'll poop twice in a day or every once in a great while I might skip a day. Yeah. But those are the rare occasions. I'm a once a day pooper and uh, you know, like five days in not being able to poop, I, I, I try, I, you know, like, um, okay, we're going to make this happen tonight. So go in there and nothing happens. <laughs> so basic training, uh, you have the latrine queen who sets the rules for the bathroom and ours was like, we're, you're, we only have this one, this urinal available. And we only have these two toilets available. That way they don't have to clean the whole thing every single day, twice a day or whatever. They got to clean it. Yeah. I realized I hadn't pooped since I got there when I came back from chow one day and smelled the, the, the unmistakable scent of someone with really nasty shits, farting, pooping, whatever they were doing in there. And I walked by and I was like, <laughs> and, and I got in line because everybody else did the same thing. Yeah. And yeah, that's, what that's, a weird that's how phenomenon. that went down. It, it really is. Um, did you, uh, did you have a guy that, uh, that, that drank caffeine during base training? Not that I know of. I definitely do not remember someone consuming caffeine. Mm. We had one guy, his name was DeLeo. Mm. He came in after, after the day after everybody else, his flight got delayed or whatever. So he showed up by himself on the pad, had all the TIs, pick him up, put him out, pick him up, put him down, all that kind of good stuff. And he had cracked the smile. Now we're all watching through the little louver windows, you know? Oh. And he yeah. cracked a smile as the TIs were getting in his face. And they were like, what, what is your problem? Blah, blah, blah. And he said, sir, Erwin DeLeo reports ordered. I know you can't touch me, sir. <clears throat> yeah. And that was, yeah. that was day one or day zero for him. Right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. his bunk was next to mine and on top. So okay. I, I was on a, on a single bunk and he was on the first bunk bed on the top. And, uh, yeah, he and I, he, he was, he was my buddy during basic, you know, we, we talked a lot about a lot of things and, uh, when, when we had a chance to talk anyway, and yeah, he was the first one to get back up. He sat down, ate his meal, got up, went to the counter and got some ice in a cup and got a Pepsi and went and sat back down and got called to the snake pit immediately. And they started going up one side and down the other. And next thing you know, cause he was at my table. Next thing you know, the TI was at the table. He's like, there's my three non-carbonated, non-caffeinated beverages and my one carbonated, caffeinated beverage. I was like, oh, shit. Okay. Uh, DeLeo's the dude. <laughs> wow. That See, okay. So I was actually, I was telling a bunch of basic training stories to my son last night. And that's kind of why I wanted to talk about 
uh, military stories tonight because I kind of was inspired. But I was just telling him last night that they taunted us with with things in the chow line. There were there was a, a case with desserts, mm -hmm. like cake, and the sodas, like like you already talked about, and like all of these sweets and things that we were not allowed to have. But there they were. Oh, you were allowed to have them if you were willing to put up with whatever came with it. Right. Which is like, that's the biggest fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Because, oh, oh, so bad, man. So, but, but it was there to, to fetter out those who had no self-control, you know, right. it, it, they gave you this really, really easy way to get in trouble and gave you just enough leeway to think you might be able to get away with it. Um, and in a, in a condition in which they could easily control the situation. So basically if you had no self-control, you were going to fail that part and you would, they would find out, you know, it's, it's cleverly designed. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, w Scottish one says that's brutal. Uh, yeah, it, it really was. I remember that. I'm not like a sugar hound, but like after like two weeks of not having sugar, it, that cake starts looking real good. <laughs> <laughs> I, my my thing was um i i i was constantly low energy because we were so active and we weren't me and you weren't that active in high school like we did a lot of walking and stuff but we didn't we weren't like yeah. athletes and shit right um, right so what i did is i started getting chocolate milk with every with every meal every meal got i had chocolate milk regardless unless mm -hmm. i was going to go run and then in which case i didn't drink milk but um i got chocolate milk and then at the table they had your salt your pepper uh, a thing of hot sauce and sugar presumably for people's coffee that they wanted to get so i just sugar loaded my chocolate milk to where it was basically chocolate syrup and drank that and that's what gave me the energy to get through and i actually lost weight in basic training even sugar loading my my chocolate milk jeez wow okay so now, now if i'm I gonna tell i'm gonna tell the my story of of getting in trouble like the worst like ass chewing that I got mm -hmm. in basic training that I, that I want to hear years after. So w when I went to basic training, I wanted to be like the non standout guy. Like I, I asked the recruiter, I mean, you were there most of the time we were asking the recruiter, like, all right, all right what, what should we expect? What, what, you know, what should we take with us? What should we, you know, everything we want to know everything we could about basic training so that we could be as successful as possible. Don't take nudie mags. Yeah, like you know, like, are they going to take him away from anything you? Anything with you to basic that that's you know going to be contraband, <laughs> like weapons and don't take anything to basic that you're not willing to throw in the trash, right? And like like cigarettes and lighters, like I even at the airport because I you know I was a smoker and I threw that shit away at the airport before I even got to the got to basic because I didn't want that I didn't not want to be associated with that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I wore blue jeans. I wore a plain white T-shirt. Uh, I had a fresh haircut before I arrived. Like, I did not want to stand out. I got through all of the initial, like, off the bus, like, the pick them up, put them down, all of that kind of crap. Uh, got through all of that without getting yelled at. Once, I had a couple TIs, like, eyeball me, like, get, get up in my face and stare at me. Uh, but no, I never got singled out. Uh, so I'm like, all right, man, I'm fucking nailing this. I'm fucking nailing it. Yes. We get upstairs to the dorm. And the first thing that we have to do is get our key. We have to lock our security drawer. And our key, the key to that thing is on a chain that goes around your neck. Mm -hmm. Right. So the procedure for this. So the, the security drawer is part of your wall locker. And it's on the bottom. To get to it, you have to kneel down. So it's got a padlock, like a normal, like hasp style uh, padlock, but it's one of those styles that the key is retained. If the padlock is open, the key is retained in the lock. And you can't well, take never... the key out until you latch the lock. Right. So, and I never encountered anything like this. Well, it should be a pretty simple concept, right? You, you lock the lock and you pull the key out. Well, for whatever reason, my brain could not comprehend that you have to like squeeze the hasp and then like push in slightly with the key as you turn it and then it will pull out. I, I didn't get it. So anyway, so we have to, we had to kneel down, put the, uh, the chain around our neck and then lock the drawer and then stand up and we're supposed to stand at attention at, at, next to our lockers. 
So T.I. explains all that. And then he says, okay, go. So everybody gets down and does it. I'm sitting here struggling with this fucking key and can't get it out. I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I can't get it out. I can't get it out. So I'm looking at the guy next to me. I'm like, dude, help me out. I can't figure this out. He's like, no, 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 shh. No, shut up, shut up, shut up. Because he didn't want to get in trouble. So I'm still on the ground trying to struggle with this key. And I hear the TI, like the TI doesn't notice at first. He moves on to the next thing. He's like, all right, the next thing you're going to do is. What the fuck? What the fuck? (laughs) I know he's talking about me and I'm sweating. Like I'm I'm almost crying at this point. (laughs) And you remember the TIs had these taps on the the bottom of their shoes, on the heels of their boots. So I just hear this coming toward me, this tap, 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 tap. (laughs) Exactly. Yes. And he gets right up next to me and starts screaming at me. I've never been screamed at like this, like before or since. (laughs) And then he starts yelling at the guy next to me, like, you know, you piece of shit. Why didn't you help this fucking idiot? Blah, 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 blah. And all this. It just turned into a big scene. The whole thing lasted like 10 minutes. It was awful. Uh, but finally, like it was, it was, it was done. And that was the worst part of basic training for me. <laughs> wow. Um, I sprained my left knee going over the over under on the obstacle course, the confidence course. Oh, no. So I wanted to sit there for a minute and just let my knee kind of like, you know, feel its way out. And they said, no, either you run or you leave. So, I left by going around the next obstacle and then continued on the trail. And then they found out and they weren't happy about that. <laughs> oh, you're injured. Well, you need to go to the clinic and this and that. They're going to do blah, 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 blah. Um, so I ended up having to go to the clinic. They basically told me my knee was fine to get on, go, go along, which I mean, it, it, I, I, it just twisted a little bit. Like it was no big deal. Uh, now here we are 24 years later and my knee is complete shit and it all started with that event, but whatever, like it's not, uh, it's not dwell in the past. Um, but by doing that, I miss Chow. Oh God, that's the worst. And Chow after the confidence course was like the best Chow you had the entire time. Cause you were genuinely hungry and you've been slobbing through mud and grime and whatever else for a half the day. And it's like a, like a 55 mile march out there and a, 48 mile march back or some shit. And I, okay, slight exaggeration. <clears throat> whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm I carried the wrong decimal, whatever. And it's 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 definitely uh, it's it's like a 3 or 4 mile march. It's pretty yeah. it's way out there. Or at least it was. I don't know what the hell it is now. And I missed chow and I went I was like I was hungry. <laughs> yeah. So I balled up and I asked the TI if, if I could get uh, Chow when I returned. You know, I gave him a little paper from the clinic and asked him if I could get Chow. And Chow Hall was closing in like 20 minutes. So he was like, sure, yeah, you can go get Chow. Take so-and-so with you and blah, 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 blah. I like, okay, cool. I went down there. And this is the first of two times that I got, I basically got shafted at the Chow Hall. <laughs> went down there and there were no flights outside. Well, okay. how do you get in if you don't have a flight commander? Or a, a chow runner. Well, yeah, a chow runner to, t- to tell you when it's ready and blah, 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 and a, and a flight commander to tell you to go in, or a dorm commander, whatever, dorm, dorm chief, to dorm tell chief. you when to go in and what line to go in and whatever else. Like, there was, there, nobody was lined up. There was nothing to tag along with. We couldn't ask another dorm chief to cut in with their flight or anything. Um, and the other kid had already eaten, but he was the chubby kid, so he wasn't allowed to eat. Oh no! Like it was just—it was just awful. So here I am, and I walk up, and I'm slowly opening the door to see if you know, uh, find out if CQ is in there. And sure as shit, there's CQ in there, and they're not happy to see me because they're trying to get out of there. And I was like, "Fuck!" I couldn't remember. Uh, yeah, it was—it was just—it was, just, was awful. And then we end up sitting by ourselves because the other the the flight that was actually sitting down. We went through the line. And I got my food, and I got basically what was what the pans that hadn't been pulled up yet, and um, I, I I sat down at my table right as the table before us was leaving. So it was basically just me and this other dude who wasn't eating, and I was just throwing food down my gullet as fast as possible. And of course, the TIs had nothing else to do, oh. so they basically just stood up around us and just watched me eat. They didn't say anything; they just watched me eat. 
I couldn't yeah. eat fast enough. I had to finish everything that's on my plate. Three of the things that were on my plate or whatever, I didn't even like. Like they were just gross. They're overcooked pieces of dog turd. And <laughs> I, I forgot to get a drink. So I'm basically sitting there, no oh, drink. Oh. Like it was just, it was, it was just bad. It's, it was, it sucked. It was, and it's all stupid stress. There's no reason for me to be stressed out of the situation, but as sure as hell was. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that's, that is the biggest thing in basic training is it's all basically mind games. Yes. There's a physical component. Of mm -hmm. course there is. Uh, but the, the physical component is honestly not that hard. Right. It's, it's, it's like the it's worst gym membership ever. It's the what? <laughs> it's the worst gym membership ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. I mean, I mean, it's it's a good workout for people that didn't do anything. I eat us. Like, I mean, how many times did you hear somebody say that they lost fitness by going to basic training? Yeah. Uh, you know, half of those are probably just full of shit. But the other half, I, I'm pretty sure they're correct because there's not a whole lot of like actual you know, conditioning and muscle building and everything else. Um, but yeah, man, ah. Basic training. Good Lord. Yeah. I, I want to bring uh, up this question right here, cause, or this pic picture right here that I'm showing on my screen. Because it's, okay. it's got to be the most Air Force picture I've ever seen of basic training. Okay. Now, <laughs> tell me what you think when you see this. Uh, d describe this to our audio listeners. Okay. So this is uh, a young Air Force trainee, presumably, in ABUs, wearing a flak helmet, Carrying an M16, and he's wearing Air Force issue leather gloves and a mouth guard, and he's like crawl. He's like crawling through water. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he's crawling through water or if he's if he's like I. If he, he's, I think he might have fallen down. <laughs> he's chest deep in water. Whether that water is six inches deep or five feet deep, I don't know. But he's chest deep in water. He's wearing, like you said. The, these are these are not uh, comfortable gloves. These are like yard gloves for heavy yeah. yard work. Like at at best, they're they're more like welding gloves. Yeah, yeah. They're very thick leather. Yeah. He's got an M16 with a bent handle on it. <laughs> yeah. You see Obviously that? Had, uh, for training use only. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, that and his weapons in the water anyway. And uh, yeah, um, it's got a, a damn mouth guard. Come on, like. Can you just not bite your own self going through a confidence course? Is this a thing now? One of my details was to mow the confidence course, and we had to wear a suit of armor, dude. <laughs> it was I, you had to wear a, like a full body length apron. You had to wear shoe protectors, which were like these metal. Like I swear to God, it's right out of like a medieval like suit of armor. It's these like metal things that you strap around your boots that mm. like. It's these metal. It, it was crazy. We had to wear a full face mask, or like a, a um, um, like a, a face shield, mm -hmm. like a hazmat face shield. We had to wear gloves. It was the most ridiculous thing. I've been mowing the grass since I was like eight years old or nine years old in flip flops, <laughs> shorts, and sometimes a t-shirt or or tank top, and that's it. <laughs> like. Here I am, 18 years old, being told to put on all this shit to yeah. mow the grass. You're nine years old mowing the grass. You don't even you don't even turn the mower off to piss. You just kind of wing it off to the side, let it go, and right back to mowing. Oh um, yeah. yeah, exactly. But here's the thing that really gets me, and this is one of the, one of those Air Force things that I always see, and I d I don't know enough about the Navy and the Marines and uh, uh, the Army to criticize their photos, but I know for certain this dude's chin strap is not on properly. <laughs> yeah, his helmet is not tight. The chin strap is not on, and I'm assuming this is an Air Force photo because your average civilian is not going to get a photo like this. Um, why is it that the Air Force can't take a, a, a an official photo with people with their air, their uniforms on, right? Like this has especially, been a trend my entire career. Well, it's especially when all of the photos that I've been involved with for like you know Airman Magazine or Stars and Stripes or whatever mm -hmm. have been posed. Yeah. Like if I'm told to like, okay, we want to get some, some pictures of, of, you know, like you guys working on this equipment or whatever, like yeah. I will be told that that's going to happen. So I like make sure I've got the TO out and I'm looking at the TO while yep. I'm holding a tool and but, just standing there for but like no, several seconds. If you open Air, Airman Magazine or you open like uh, the, the, the public affairs website, there's some dude soldering, no face shield, no gloves, 
<laughs> smoke, yeah. lead smoke just trailing right up in his face. No goggles <laughs> or nothing. Like, I can't do that when no one's around. How are you getting away with that in a public affairs photo? <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, where's oh QA God. at this time, you know? <laughs> God, this pisses me off. How the hell did they get mouth guards in basic training? That's what I want to know. I didn't get a mouth guard. No, and where do they go? Is that like your mouth guard for your entire trip? Is that part of your bottom drawer now? You have to have a mouth guard in there? <laughs> yeah. Is that is that like a thing? You 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 shave your face, you brush your teeth, you wash your mouth guard? Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Oh uh, yeah. And and what happens if you drop your mouth guard? Is it like football? You just pick one up and put it back, and put it in your mouth, and go on? I, well, yeah. I mean, you just you just spit on it and wipe so, it on your shirt. <laughs> so many. You're good to go. So many questions. So many questions. And why is this dude's mouth so open? that we can see the back of his mouth and he's in this muddy ass water because he's getting his picture taken. <laughs> God, he's probably saying hoorah air force right I, now. Singing the air force song. I should, I totally should have been PA when I joined the air force instead of being a mechanic. Like, I, uh, anyway, oh, he's probably, he's probably saying the airman's creed, that thing that they invented like three quarters of the way through our careers. The, I still don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I am an American airman. I am a warrior. That's all I remember. You, I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um uh Snow says uh he's not even in the service. Yeah, that that that's definitely a possibility. <laughs> Just an actor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You never know, man. Uh, yeah. Crazy. It's fake but, water. Uh, anyway, CG so that, water. that was the beginning of our Air Force career, but uh the Air Force has kind of sent us all over the planet. Do you mm -hmm. do you have a favorite place that, that the Air Force sent you? <clears throat> um. Wow, we're, we're talking about at all, right? Like TDY at all. is deployment yeah, assignments you station there. Uh, you were sent there for training. Like what? If I were to pick one place that was my the place itself was my favorite, not not regarding what was going on in my family life or whatever, I would have to go with Oahu. Oahu, okay. Yeah. Hawaii uh, is just it, it's hard to beat because it's just so beautiful. As long as you get away from the tourists. Right. Yeah, I think uh, so. My my favorite permanent duty assignment, again, regardless of what was going on with my family at the time, uh, was Spengdahlem Air Base, Germany. Like yeah. hands down, like nothing else even comes it's, close. It's funny. Both of us have our favorite places where we got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Is it in spite of or because of? Like, I don't... <laughs> in my case, probably both. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh geez, man. Yeah. Um, no, but but uh, Germany was awesome. Uh, it was awesome in itself, but also just the, you know the, the how centrally located in Europe it was. I got to travel so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My my funnest TDYs, uh, temporary duty for anyone that's not in the military. Um, that's where you get sent basically on a on an Air Force paid vacation, but you got to work. That, like, that's the, the catch. Uh, but, well, but that really the depends on the TDY. TDY. <laughs> Yeah, but the best TDYs were definitely from Germany. I mean, I got to go to Sweden, uh, Crete, uh, man, I don't even know, like just places all over Europe. It was so, so much fun. And it was so enlightening to see that many different countries and that many different like cultures and be exposed to that many different languages. And just so, I don't know, just everything about it was awesome. I was there for five years and... I would probably do another five years. <laughs> was okay. So, what was your least favorite place that I was stationed at? At, at all that there that you were in, in your least oh. favorite place that you were there on official duty? Oh my god, that oh for there's so many of those too, and for different reasons. But it, just in the experience itself, again, regardless of like being separated from family and stuff like that. Yeah, we're just talking about the location. We're not talking about because uh, Osam would easily be my least favorite assignment. Uh, so the, the location itself would probably be Balad Air Base, Iraq. <laughs> that place was, um, I mean, we called it Mortaritaville for a reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that place is just uh, not awful. stable. Absolutely awful. <laughs> is that one of the places that had the uh, the poo pits that were burning? Uh, yeah, I don't think it was poo pits though. I think it was more like medical waste and, uh, yeah, whatever. And just everything. They burned everything. So e I mean, e either yeah, way, you should claim that shit on the, on, uh, with the VA. Um, yeah. So 
my least favorite location that the Air Force has sent me. Um, I, I kind of, I, cause I've been to some pretty shitty places. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. Well, while you're thinking of that, I think yeah. one of my favorite TDYs of all time was when I went to Sweden. It mm-hmm. was, um, like super laid back. Like it was a, it was a fun TDY, like at work was even fun. Um, it was also where I really discovered coffee for the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd had a, a cup of coffee probably on three occasions in my life up to that point. And I did it. I like, I had those cups of coffee for, well, I mean, I could use some caffeine and that's what everybody else is drinking. I guess I'll try some coffee dumped like half a thing of sugar or, you know, like half a fucking tub of sugar and half a tub of creamer in there. And I still hated it. Uh, but I got to Sweden and they had this, this coffee machine that was free. It was like a vending machine but it was free. There was you know, no money required. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try coffee again. And I got like a coffee or like a chocolate infused coffee out of the thing. And I fucking loved it. Mm. And I, like I became kind of hooked on it. And then like I started visiting the coffee shops downtown, which there was like seven of them on every block. <laughs> coffee shops are like a whole other level in Sweden. And, um, yeah, I just started trying like different combinations of things in the coffee and I really started enjoy, to enjoy coffee. I get back to Germany like a month and a half later and now I'm like one of the regulars at the coffee pot. And people look at me like, weren't you just <laughs> like talk about how much you hate coffee? Like what the hell's going on? Um, so my least favorite place that the Air Force has ever sent me, I would say, was um, Barksdale, Louisiana. Mm, okay. And uh, I started thinking about it. B-52. I started thinking about it and no, actually I'm going to change that. I'm going to change that. Uh, South Carolina was my least favorite place there for sent me. Oh yeah. Khaki wacky. Yeah. South khaki wacky. Yep. South Carolina. Mm. Cause all the things that I didn't like about Louisiana were worse in South Carolina. Mm. I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't spent a lot of time in Louisiana and uh, I would say 99% of my Louisiana time has been in New Orleans. So I've had a different Louisiana experience significantly than you have. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and my favorite TDY, man, I don't even know. Cause I haven't really done a lot of, a lot of fancy TDYs. Mm. Um, you ever do a red flag? Nope. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I never did any of the the air, airplane TDYs. I always did I did the deployments, never the TDYs. Ah, uh, that sucks. Um, that was like the first half of my career. I didn't do a whole lot of TDYs, yeah, like with the unit kind of things in like the first half. I did like Ryan Mine though. We spent 23 hours there in a layover, uh, and that was really enjoyable. Um, really beautiful country up there in Germany. Yeah, yeah, and that's when. Um, I had a similar experience uh, on the way is either to or from one of the desert deployments. Uh, I don't, I think, well, actually I think it was Rhine mine on the way there, but then they closed it while I was deployed mm. and we had to go through Ramstein on the way back. Uh, yeah. But that's when I was like, Oh my God, I want to live here <laughs> because it was so green. I was coming out of, out of uh, Nevada yeah. and it was just nothing but brown ass desert. <laughs> then I'm going to a desert <laughs> environment in the deployed location. So seeing this green was just like, Oh, like it was just an oasis. I went through, uh, went through Rhine mine after spending my 21st birthday in the desert. Mm, so not the best place to have your 21st. No, but Rhine mine made up for it. Oh God. <laughs> uh, on the way back from Afghanistan, on my Afghanistan deployment, we like our, our, uh, Oh, what do you call it? Like our awaiting, awaiting packs location, mm-hmm. uh, was Manas air base in Kyrgyzstan. And they had a two d de- a two drink limit per person there. Uh, but you could choose between beer or wine. And it turns out the wine is by far the higher alcohol, uh, content. Mm-hmm. So I ordered two wines and drank those and like somebody else got a wine and he didn't want it. So he gave me his. And then I was like, wait a minute, you only used one of your rations, right? 
like, go get me the other one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did the same thing with another guy. And I got so shitty drunk after like six months in Afghanistan of <laughs> no alcohol. <laughs> then I have like eight wines. Jeez. Yep. It was really bad. And we were, we were in the PAX terminal waiting for our like uh, number to be called. We were just a small group of Air Force folks, like maybe like 20 or 30 people. And the other like 200 people that were in the PAX terminal were Army. Mm. And one thing that's hard for me to realize is how projected my voice gets when I'm uh, inebriated. I can testify to that. <laughs> and I, I started talking about Army people. Why the fuck are all these goddamn Army people around here? Who the fuck said, this is an air base. Why are there so many fucking army guys? And like, I'm saying things like this, like very loud. And somebody's like, dude, you need to shut the fuck up. Like, keep your voice down. Like, I'm not even talking that loud. <laughs> but don't you see these fucking army idiots? And like, people were like, dude, like, seriously. <laughs> yeah. I um, I have been such people for you. Yes. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> It it might be a, a an issue. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, real quick, Diamond Club. We have a stream team. If you go to Diamond Club stream team uh, uh, on Twitch, just look up Diamond Club stream team. I'm not sure what the address is because I'm not prepared. Cruise on by there, and there's a bunch of other streamers in Diamond Club that we are associated with, and we're really uh, happy to be to help them out and throw some stuff at them. And I just talked to Mike TV. He's trying to get to Vegas, and. Here's the thing. This is what brought this up. If you if you have the means to get from Texas to Vegas and you wouldn't mind a uh, a ride along, there we go. Uh, Twitch.tv slash team slash Diamond Club. If you would if you're going to Vegas and you're in Texas or driving through Texas and you wouldn't mind a ride along, let me know or let Mike TV know that because uh, he's already got a place to stay once he gets there for the TMS thing later this month. He just needs a ride and back out there and back. But here's the thing. He's going to start doing ditties, little jingles for each of the stream team shows. Oh. For us to play as advertisements on each other's show. That's amazing. Isn't it, though? That is that is really, really good stuff. So if you're watching this and you're part of the stream team, just let me know. Uh, reach out to me, and I will give you the details on how exactly to do it. Uh, or just jump in this, the Diamond Club uh, TV um, uh, 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 what you might call it, uh, Discord, and uh, find me in there, and I'll get you the information. And we, uh, we, we, we all, we'll, we'll get all. What we're gonna do is we're going to, um, we're gonna uh, premiere them here on the Ritual Misery program, and then put them in a depository for everyone to use as advertisements for their show. So it's coming soon. The Ritual Misery podcast will be brought to you by Mike TV. Fantastic. Mike TV is one of the coolest dudes I've ever met. And that's, I'm not even kidding. Uh, what a cool guy and, uh, yeah, incredibly, uh, musically talented. Yep. Uh, chat room is, uh, pretty excited about this news. Uh, yeah. as am I, I'm looking so forward hit, to that. Hit me up in the, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, hit me up in the in the Discord. It's been a private conversation between him and I until now, and I'm happy to announce that he's going to do that because he's fucking awesome. But hell yeah, and but, uh, but, but more importantly, if you can offer him a ride <laughs> to Vegas, like seriously, hook that dude I, up. I it offered the funnest car ride you've probably ever had. Yeah, I, I guarantee. I that. offered to pay him. I was going to use ritual misery money, the, our patron money, to pay him for the jingles to compensate him for his time. And he's like, I don't need compensation, but if you need, if you know someone who has uh, the means to get to Vegas and back to Texas, let me know. Cause I need a ride. And I was like, well, the least I can do is tell people about it. And there you go. I've now told people about it and I'll push this out. If as he soon can as get Twitch to Southern me. New Mexico, I might be able to help him out the rest of the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hell, if he can get to El Paso, <laughs> yeah. I could probably hook him up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that, that's awesome. And that's going to happen. And that's just magical. So, um, and, uh, W Scottis one, I believe had, or was it geek IO? One of the two had a stream this last week for charity uh, on the 30th of March that I totally missed out on because I had other things going on, but, uh, it's just part of what stream team does. We are awesome and we are making the world a better place at least a little bit at a time. So that's all my spiel. Kent, can you close this out? Because my voice is about to go. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Uh, 
I double down on everything that you said. I love the stream team. I love being a part of it. Uh, there's always something going on. Uh, so absolutely check it out. Uh, it's uh, www.twitch.tv slash team slash diamond club. Check out all the shows. They're all awesome. Um, anyway, Amos, uh, where can you be found on the internet if people want to follow your shenanigans? Uh, on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. And again, uh, let's talk about Thrones. Look it up on your favorite podcatcher and catch me there too. Absolutely. And on Twitter, I am at R M underscore Del Noche. That is the hardest of my social medias to remember. I'm Del Noche or Del Noche 77, literally everywhere else on the internet. Uh, check me out there. If you want to follow the show and find out what we going on, what we got going on, we are at Ritual Misery. Uh, submit ideas in our subreddit at ritualmisery.reddit.com. Uh, but more importantly, you can go over to ritualmisery.com and find links to everything that we've got going on. Uh, we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritualmisery. I want to say thank you to Kevin McLeod so much for allowing us to use your music. Not only us, but literally everything on the internet uses your music. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> uh, find all of his stuff at incompetech.com. Thank you for listening. For Amos, and for me, and more importantly, for you. This has been your Ritual Music Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Loser. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. R I T U A L M I S E L Y. I couldn't hear the music coming in, so I didn't know where we were. <laughs> <laughs>